when Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph founded Netflix, then known as Kibble in 1997, I bet they never anticipated that they were starting a multi-billion dollar business. Their business idea, which was simply an upgrade to the DVD rental business, has grown to become one of the biggest TV and movie studios in the world. Today, Netflix is worth over $200 billion and has more subscribers than all the cable TV channels in America combined. To be more precise, as of the second quarter of 2020, the company had more than 72 million users in the US and 192.95 million paying streaming subscribers worldwide. How did Netflix go from just renting out movies to making them in just 20 years? In this video, we will examine the Netflix story, the company's growth, and of course, draw some business lessons. So let's get it on. If you were a 90s kid like myself, you'll probably be familiar with Blockbuster, VHS cassettes and DVDs. Like most casual observers, I always thought Netflix was just another lucky kid in the block that hid the spotlight only recently. I had absolutely no idea that the company has been the brain behind several innovations in the movie industry. For every major development in the home entertainment market, Netflix always seems to be behind the scenes, waiting to capitalize on the latest consumer trend. Netflix's success is not a product of luck. Instead, it is as a result of a keen understanding of its market. Legend has it that Reed Hastings started Netflix after returning a copy of Apollo 13 to his local blockbuster. Upon returning the movie, he was told that he owed $40 in late fees. Hastings was scared of what his wife would say about the steep late fee. He felt there must be a better way to rent movies and this gave birth to what is now known as Netflix. Well, legends are not always true since Randolph disputes Hastings' story on the origin of their company. We all agree on one thing though, and that is the fact that Netflix was launched in 1997. Blockbuster was the undisputed king of the home entertainment rental niche at that time. However, Netflix's mail-order DVD rental business model was unique. People say their idea was a convenient way to rent movies, but here's a shocking truth. While most people thought that Netflix focused exclusively on distribution, their end game was to decentralize entertainment and unbundle premium TV from the monopolistic grip of big cable. DVD rentals were just an easy way for them to gain traction in an intensely competitive market. When Netflix launched in 1997, it had a video library of almost 900 titles with a seven-day maximum rental policy. By April 1999, their library had expanded to 3,100 titles, exceeding 5,000 titles by January 2000. In 1999, the company announced its new subscription model priced at $15.95. The new model allowed subscribers to rent up to four movies at a time, with no return by dates. Barely a year later, they ditched the late fees and return by dates option in favor of a monthly subscription plan priced at $19.95. Between 2000 and 2003, the company enjoyed consistent growth. Netflix went public in May 2002 and with initial share price of $15. Today, a Netflix share is worth over $500. Although Netflix enjoyed growth in both revenue and subscribers, the company was running at a loss during this period. This was due to high operational costs. By the end of 2006, Netflix had over 6 million subscribers, boasted of a 7-year annual compound growth rate of 79% and had finally become profitable. The company generated more than 80 million in profits in 2006. Netflix was able to record an impressive growth by challenging incumbent players with a truly innovative business model and by focusing on a single metric, the number of movies watched. While other players calculated their successes based on viewership and the number of viewers a TV show had, Netflix came from the opposite direction, judging its success from the number of movies or shows a viewer had seen. By 2007, Netflix introduced its online streaming service, Watch Now. The service was truly radical for the time. While many people thought that the company was crazy to stream movies over the internet, the move was actually logical given their business model. Remember that Netflix's goal was to reduce friction in accessing entertainment. 
It did this by first refining and improving its DVD by mail service through faster delivery, more distribution centers, and eliminating fees. Now here's the thing, even though Netflix was already hitting some big numbers and doing very well in the DVD rental business, they knew it wouldn't last. As an entrepreneur, getting comfortable with a single business success is a bad idea. Most companies that fail to evolve and adapt to changing business dynamics have all been forced out of the market. Blockbuster, Blackberry, and Nokia, you name it. So Netflix started early to future-proof its business by entering the video streaming market. By making this shift, they could now provide subscribers with instant access to thousands of titles that they could binge-watch on any device. While cable companies were concerned with traditional business models and quarterly revenue targets, Netflix was looking a decade into the future. Needless to say that the technology needed to make their vision a reality was non-existent at that time. Undeterred, the duo took a huge risk by investing more than $40 million in the development of new streaming technologies in 2007. It's mind-boggling since there was literally no consumer demand for what they were offering. A lot of people also thought that the idea wouldn't work. However, since most people didn't believe in the tech, the competition was small, and by the time everyone else caught on, Netflix was already light years ahead of them. The company had the best streaming tech, the largest library of titles, and the biggest subscriber base. In 2008, the company announced that it was stopping its DVD retail sales, one week after debuting WatchNow on Mac platforms. By 2011, Netflix rebranded its DVD rental business, splitting its streaming business and rental business into two distinct subscription packages. Netflix for streaming and Quickster for rentals. This was a wrong move though. Customers and investors did not like the decision, and this raised questions about the company's future prospects, with critics questioning Hastings' leadership. Coupled with an unpopular price increase which took effect in summer, around 800,000 subscribers abandoned the service. But guess what? Less than a month after announcing Quickster, and before the service even officially launched, Hastings scrapped the plan entirely. He took full responsibility for the quick state of Arkle and admitted his mistake. According to Hastings, I messed up. I owe everyone an explanation. It is clear from the feedback over the past two months that many members felt we lacked respect and humility in the way we announced the separation of DVD and streaming, and the price changes. That was certainly not our intent, and I offer my sincere apology. While the Quickster incident could have sunk lesser companies, I think that Netflix handled the fallout almost perfectly. The lesson here is that by listening to its customers, responding quickly, and acknowledging the role of its poor decision-making, they turned the incident into a positive PR exercise. The entirety of your product and service revolves around your customers, and you must learn to listen to them. From 2013, you can say that Netflix began to conquer the world. The company dove headfirst into the world of original programming, with its high-profile political drama House of Cards. Both critics and fans gave the show rave reviews, and this marked a crucial turning point in Netflix's growth. From 2016 onwards, Netflix received numerous awards and accolades, including 54 nominations at the 68th Primetime Emmy Awards. They simultaneously went live in 130 countries worldwide. Their feature films also became increasingly ambitious, and attracted some of Hollywood's finest screenwriters, directors, and actors. And in 2017, the number of Netflix subscribers surpassed the total number of cable subscribers in the United States. With this, Netflix effectively became the largest entertainment provider in the world. I could go on about the Netflix story, however I'd like to stop here and draw the three most important lessons that I think every entrepreneur should learn from the company. One. Identify your key growth metric and stick with it. It's no secret that most new businesses will fail. While some fail because they take too many risks at once, others fail because they don't aim high enough. As a business person, it is important to identify a massive potential market that you can grow into. Facebook may be a social media giant with over 2 billion users, but they still care about how active their users are and still reach for ways to maximize engagement. Google is still interested in the number of searches conducted every month, despite being one of the biggest tech companies in the world. For Netflix, their key metric was how many movies a user watched, and they sought for a way to build on that. For a start, your key metric might be as simple as increasing your total number of sales. 
Later on, it could change to how you retain existing customers. Don't be vague in your business. As much as possible, have a concrete plan with technical goals around your core metric. What's your core metric? And how are you driving growth around that metric? 2. Make the obvious moves Obvious moves don't necessarily have to be dumb moves. By 2007, it was obvious that the DVD rental market was facing a decline. The obvious move was to look for a way to attract new customers while retaining existing customers. Data was showing the obvious move, evolve or die, but too many established players could not grasp the change that was coming. Trust me, if Hastings had listened to the naysayers who thought that streaming of videos was nothing but a fad, there'd be no Netflix today. For you as an entrepreneur, your obvious moves should revolve around these three questions if your business is at a critical growth stage. 1. How can you improve your product? 2. How can you solve your customers' problems and make their lives easier? 3. How can you solve the hardest problems? Remember that people don't use products just for the fun of it. Instead, people use products to solve their problems and make their lives better. Any product that seamlessly solves customers' problems will surely win. 3. Focus on quality Throughout the history of Netflix, you'd agree with me that the company has focused on doing what it does really well. From getting DVDs to customers faster, to developing new streaming technologies, the quality of the Netflix experience and the quality of their content. This has helped them build not only a large subscriber base, but also a loyal audience of fans. Quality doesn't necessarily mean spending more money. If your product is good in itself, how's your customer support? How's the onboarding process? Is there any product documentation or learning resources? Improving your customer's experience should be one of your cornerstones. And just in case customers don't see things from your perspective, be quick to listen to them and evolve accordingly. So there you have it. This is the story of Netflix and why they're so successful. I hope you've picked a lesson or two from their success story. Don't forget to tell us what you think in the comment section.